Hey peeps, welcome back. It's Aldo from Zero to Mastery, and in today's tutorial, we're diving into Power BI, more specifically, the installation and configuration process. Now, this isn't just any tutorial. It's part of Travis Kuzik's complete Power BI Bootcamp course available on Zero to Mastery. So if you're ready to become a data wizard and master this powerful tool, click the link in the top right hand corner or check out the description below for the full course. All right, that's it from me. Let me hand it over to Travis. Enjoy. So before we can use Power BI to become wizards in the way of data, we first need to actually install it on our computer. But fortunately, this process is super easy. Now it is worth noting that Power BI requires a Windows machine. So if you don't have one, you can try installing a virtual machine on your computer, but that is definitely going to be a much greater technical challenge than simply installing Power BI on a regular Windows machine. So because the Power BI landscape is constantly shifting and the exact sequence of links you need to follow to install Power BI might very well change 10 minutes after I record this, I want to follow the most repeatable path, which is to simply Google Power BI. Not doing that, the very first link listed takes me right to Microsoft's Power BI website. And here, I'll want to click this little caret next to the products heading. And among these products listed, I'll click Power BI Desktop, since that's the application we'll be working with in the course. And that takes me to another page where I'm able to click a link to download Power BI for free. Now note that when you click this, you'll be taken to the Microsoft App Store, where you'll follow some very straightforward prompts to complete the installation. So once you complete the installation process and open Power BI for the first time, you're most likely going to see a pop-up window that looks something like this with a prompt suggesting that you should sign in to publish reports, access certified data sets, et cetera, et cetera. And as tempting as this get started button is here, this process of signing in is actually for Power BI Pro, which as I mentioned in the last video, is a paid service that requires a business email account. So we'll actually just close out of this pop-up window. And now in this new Power BI file, I want to configure a specific option within the file to ensure that we don't encounter any issues with the data we'll be working with. Specifically, this option pertains to how different locales across the world have different ways to display data. In particular, date and currency values tend to be formatted in a wide variety of ways depending on where you live. In any Power BI file that you create, Power BI will be using your operating system's locale as the default locale. This locale setting is very important since it determines how Power BI interprets text, numeric, and date time values in the data we import. So several of the CSV files we'll be working with throughout the course contain date and currency fields that follow United States specific formatting. So if you're located outside of the United States, your system's locale settings may keep these fields from being recognized as date or currency values. This can result in errors while also preventing us from using some of Power BI's built-in tools for working with those specific kinds of data. To ensure consistent results with Power BI when working with the data in this course, regardless of your current operating system's locale settings, you can change Power BI's locale setting to English United States on a file by file basis. So to do that, we'll click the file tab up here in the Power BI ribbon, and then options and settings, and then options, and then under current file, I'll select regional settings, and just confirm that the locale for import is English United States. That was the default for my installation of Power BI, but it might not be for yours. So here's where you'll want to make sure that locale for import is set to English United States. And again, just to reiterate, you'll want to do this on a file by file basis. So any new Power BI file you open, you'll want to follow the same sequence of steps to make sure your locale for import is English United States. All right. So with Power BI installed and configured, 
it's time for the fun stuff. Actually getting your hands on real data in Power BI. And there you have it, folks. A big thank you to Travis for guiding us through this lesson. Want to dive even deeper? Well, lucky for you, there's a whole lot more to learn in Travis's complete Power BI Bootcamp course, linked in the top right-hand corner and in the description down below. Also, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you never miss out on future tutorials from Travis and other expert Zero to Mastery instructors. Keep learning, keep growing, and I'll see you in the next one.